Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode 989, which is getting close to a thousand. <laughs> and the topic today is actually a quote from Abraham Hicks, which is a belief is simply a thought persisted in. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. But this thing is, I'm going to ask you the question in a moment about what are you thinking about your relationship and love life? Because that may be why you're getting results you are. So let me explain a couple of things. And hi, my name is Barry Sobe, in case you don't know me, and I'll tell you more about who I am later on if I have time. So first of all, um, I was actually, I, I, well, let's start where I am. I was on a bike ride earlier, which is why I'm still like cooling down a bit. And I was listening to Abraham Hicks as part of my playlist. And she was saying, or they were saying through her, about beliefs. And it's, I've heard it before many, many times, but it really stuck today because I was thinking about it about, okay, in my own life, what am I using? What am I creating my reality from? Because we basically create reality from our beliefs. The thing is, that our beliefs are not permanent and they're not um, immovable. The reason why I'm saying that is because she was, she was explaining, or they were explaining, how beliefs are formed by persistent thoughts, meaning you think the same thing again and again and again and again, it kind of sublimates into a belief. Now, the way that works, the way I'm aware of it, is it's kind of like um, the way I talked a bit before about changing paradigms of thinking. I, I use an analogy of, of cows in a pasture. <laughs> Bear with me, this will make sense. And I'll come back to the relationship in a moment, so bear with me. Um, if you ever notice that cows in a pasture wander around, but they tend to find, and it's often the, what they call them, the, if you ever heard of a cow path, a cow path is basically where the grass has been worn away to the dirt because cows follow the same path when they go from one place to another, like through the meadows. So even though there's lots of ways to get through, they seem to follow the same path. And what that is, is a repeated... Um, embedded pathway that comes through from one place to the other. Now, not oftentimes it's through a gate, whatever it is. But basically what happens with cows is they form that path all the whole time. So as a default, they move into the same space. This is kind of how your thinking works. Because if you think, for example, that um, you'll never be you'll never be in a relationship, that you know, if you're if you're a woman, let me let me, let me put on the mindset of like the woman who's never gonna find the guy she wants. And they can, they can flip the flip the genders depending on your preference, of course and your side of the conversation. Now, you know, let me own it as if, if I was running the belief, let me put it that way, where I believe that there was no, there were no women out there that really I wanted to be with, and there's no women out there that wanted to be with me, or that sort of thing, I was running that sort of belief structure, then what I'd be doing if I was doing it repeatedly, because every time I was looking outside and going, no, nope, not interested, no, that's not working, no, not, no, all this, you know, repetitive, no, 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 no. What that starts to do is create an embedded belief from the same thing. Now, what I would say a belief is, is, is a, it's like a thought is has to be thought. Like you have to think and think. This can sound silly. You have to think your thoughts. <laughs> it makes sense. But beliefs tend to be automatic. Like In a way, it's like you believe and believe and believe until eventually you create a cow path in your mind, which is a belief. So to get back to the cow path analogy, because I was, I was studying there, cows walk through the field the way they do, but eventually they find themselves finding a certain path that works for them. And that becomes a repeated path that goes through the grass, and eventually it wears away the grass down to the dirt. If you looked in fields, you'll see these furrows through the grass. That's the same way as beliefs are as, uh, as equivalent to thinking. So that imagine the thoughts are like cows wandering around the field. When it comes to the same path, because they've got the same repeated thing going on, the same direction, the same focus, same intent, in interest, then what's happening is you're starting to embed a belief in your system or in your mindset. So thinking is repeatable practice things you do yourself. Beliefs become like the autopilot in a way. So if you have a belief running that relationships don't work or that you're always going to be abused in a relationship or that, and again, this is based upon what you may be experiencing. So this is going to sound weird, but what's happening is you're taking experience, thinking about it persistently, which then creates a belief that reinforces what happened in your next relationship. I think this is making sense. I hope it is. Let me back it up another way. See, the thing that I want to get clear to you, because this is not just about relationships, but I'm going to use that as my focus point. But the thing is, this understanding that when you start repeating the same thought about something, it becomes an embedded belief, then you'll notice by the results you create that that belief is still working. So, for example, if you find yourself never finding true love, you keep finding people who desert you or abandon you or, or cheat on you, whatever that might be, if that's one of the things you run as a thought pattern or a belief that happens to you, then you're going to keep repeating that again and again. Now, as simple as it sounds... The way that, again, Abraham Hicks was talking about this, that they were teaching about this, is that if we persist in new thought, a new thinking paradigm, so instead of saying, 
um, I'm never taking care of a relationship or I'm always abandoning a relationship. Do something like I'm always supported and loved by my partner and I'm respected and I get to choose everything I want to do, whatever that is for you. But you repeat that thought persistently. Persistently is the key. When it happens the same thing with a cow path in the direction that's been negative, you put a cow path in the direction of what's positive. So instead of being about beliefs that don't work, you start to create, excuse me, beliefs that are negative, you start to create beliefs that are positive because beliefs do work at some point in time. Now the thing about this is, and what was said in the talk, is that there's, you don't know how many times it's going to take. So you're going to keep saying what's true for you intentionally. That's why affirmations are powerful. Affirmations are basically positive thoughts. That's what you're doing. Aren't you? They're basically positive statements. But the more you say them and the more you repeat them to yourself, the more you see them, then the more embedded you start making beliefs affirming what you've said. So the true power of affirmation sometimes is underrated. In my, in my course, I have an online course called Attract the More Man You Want for the Ladies. I've also got a, um, I've got a few other programs out there that have affirmations in them. And for some people, affirmations are, affirmations are throwaway. But I believe affirmations can be used as powerful tools when you infuse them with positive energy. Because the thing is that those things, thoughts you have, because we have, was it something like 50,000 discrete thoughts an hour or a day? A lot of them. And so it's not necessarily all the thoughts that go through, but it's the repeated ones that stick. Especially the ones that are tied to emotions. And this is the piece I want to give you because this is what comes out, what I learned from, what I also understand from what was said. Is that thoughts, beliefs are not just thoughts persisted in per se. Beliefs are thoughts persisted in with feeling. So when you think something that is negative about relationships, for example, then you're creating a negative energetic reinforcement for that thought. And the more you repeat it, the more you recycle it, the more you keep doing it again and again and again, the sooner it becomes a belief that is negative embedded in your might, in your in your subconscious. So what you end up doing is you're creating a reality that matches that belief. If you start to have a light bulb go off going, oh crap, that's what I've been doing, congratulations, you start to see the light, so to speak. Not the light bulb, but the light. Understanding this paradigm, understanding this piece can change your life massively. Because this is not just, again, talking about relationships, talking about your career, about how your relationship with money, which is what I'm working on, just to be transparent. I've been doing a lot of work around my relationship with money because I've been realizing that I've been doing things that have, I've been having beliefs that impact my money situation. So I'm doing things intentionally, and this talk I listened to earlier today, reinforced what I was doing was the right thing to do, which is to keep putting positive thoughts into my mindset, especially when I start having negative ones show up. Now, the thing I'm gonna say for you, if you're in the relationship paradigm, is that the, the thing about this is you've got to be vigilant. Awareness is often key, as I've said many times. So listen to what you're thinking. Be aware of what you're thinking. So if something comes out of your mouth or just passed through your mind that is negative about relationships, if you can, as best you can, initially as quickly as you can, which may not be immediate, it may be, take time, you start thinking differently from what you thought. Meaning that if you start thinking relationships suck, I'm never gonna have what I want, you go, whoa, that's not true. In the past, maybe so, but what I believe now is relationships are this, this, and this, whatever that is for you. And keep persistently, again, that persistent word again, flip, flip, flipping the script and affirming what you really want. So it's not just doing affirmations twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, because that's good, but it, sometimes it's platitudes. I oh, know I've done it myself. But it's about having those affirmational thoughts, like in your arsenal, so to speak. So that when a, when a negative thought shows up, you shoot it down with a positive one. So just, again, I'm using, I'm using interesting analogies here, so excuse me, it's a Saturday, I'm gonna say. But when you understand that you can capture your thoughts that are negative and switch them or override them or put over them a more powerful positive affirmation that you want to stay instead, then things start to change. So it's really, in fact, in a way, it's catching it in the moment. So you bring negative thoughts, which become beliefs that are reinforced by negative emotion. So to flip the script, to change things, then your focus point has to be, if you want to do this, to have positive thoughts, affirmations, ultimately beliefs that are reinforced by positive feelings. It sounds so simple, but it takes practice, it takes commitment, it takes time. And like in my self-love meditation, which I, I always keep, so keep promoting, I'll promote it today. In the self-love meditation, which I created, it has a 30 day span as an intention to start creating new habits because in our minds, generally speaking, it takes at least 25 days. I, the science is kind of over, all over the map on this one. Some say it's 21, 25, 28, 31, 34. 
there was no numbers about this, but I basically said, look, if you do at least 30, which is a month, daily practices to reinforce certain things, like my self-love meditation is a reinforcement every day to love yourself over 30 days. The reason why I do that, because I know that 30 days changes a habit or implants a new habit. So the same thing is true of this particular thing I'm talking about here. Catching your negative thinking in the moment it happens and flipping it into a positive spin by changing the wording, reinforcing it, or just simply cancelling it, so to speak, but then replacing it with something better. It may be effort at the beginning. In fact, it probably will be. I know I've been there maybe myself. I do know that feeling. So then it's like, okay, switch it so you can be positive instead. And it may be clumsy at first. It's okay. The thing about this is it's, it's like training wheels. You're practicing, 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 and eventually, it takes time, those thoughts will start to stick in the positive more often, and thoughts in the negative will start to fade away. The more you do that, the more rapidly you start to put new beliefs in your consciousness that are positive rather than negative. So, around relationships, that may be the most primary to talk about. Again, this works in the area of love, relationships, business, money, anything, because it's about your thinking, which is independent of circumstance. Understanding that you have the choice to just run the, the old routine, the negative work, the negative thoughts, the negative beliefs, or you can choose to implant and with take practice to take time to implant new beliefs that are positive. You can change your life. How's that sound? <laughs> this is this is kind of a, this is technology that I've 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 learned about for a while, and I've talked about it some of my work, but I want to be like focused on this one today because it's so in my, in my awareness. Because again, I listened to Abraham Hicks earlier today that really reminded me of this. And one thing that she's one thing that was said, which Reverend Michael talks about at Agape as well, is that it's not about you believe it when you see it. Because this is the problem we, we do as human beings. We tend to run um, our belief systems based on what we see in the world. The problem is that's backwards. And Abraham Hicks talks about it, so does my Reverend Michael, so many other teachers too. The reality is though you you see what you believe, not you believe what you see. So they say like seeing is believing. Well actually believe first then see because what i'm talking about here is you might say well I'm, i keep seeing around me nothing interesting so therefore i believe that's the truth the thing is you've actually get you've seen what you're seeing because of because of the belief you have inside when you take back the rewind and you start to replace the belief with something different by reinforcing positive thinking yes positive thinking it is a thing and it works with practice with input and with positive emotion then what starts happening is you start to notice that the world changes you may have noticed this yourself, and I've definitely seen experience it myself, where I notice uh, hints of things that have changed because my reality is now matching my new thinking. Again, you'll see it when you believe it, not you believe it when you see it. There's a whole spiritual technology talking about how you know somebody had to see a chair before the chair was built, that sort of thing. Well, the truth is, it's like we all are creative, magnificent beings that think a lot about things in life. And you may have their thoughts that they manifest without even realizing it. I know I've had certain things happen myself. I had a, I've got a list of them I can talk about another time. But the understanding is that those things showed up because I believed I could do it, or believe I could have it, or believe I could be it. It's true for you too. We all carry that um, wiring inside. But if we've been using it as negative, then it's negative results. It's not like a bad or good thing. It's just positive or negative as a choice point. Now, you can spend your time blaming and judging the family you grew up with if that didn't work for you and they cause you all these problems that happen in your adult life. Yes, you can do that if you want, but does it really create results? Letting go of that, and in, in my work as a coach, it's more like counseling a lot of times, have my clients really start to release the attachments to judgments about the past. That also frees them up to start having positive focus towards the future. It takes practice, and it takes discipline, and it takes willingness. But it starts by understanding that you really can change your reality by changing what you see inside by believing differently in the first place. So I hope this is making some sense. If you have questions about this, please put it in the comments below because I will definitely interact. And if you have questions that are like, how does that work? Have you any experiences, any, any um, things you wanna ask me, you can do that either in the comments or send me a message over social media because if it's not something you'll share publicly, send it to me person personally, I can respond to you there as well. I will put the link to my, my self-love meditation in the comments because I did talk about it. And there's a 30 day practice to give you something to practice with. So you might want to start with that. Because the other part of this, I've talked about all week about this, is the more you love yourself and the more you care of yourself, the more attractive you are for a relationship too. So my self-love meditation will help you with that. And it'll be an example of what 30 days of practice will be like. So 
choose into affirming what you want to create as a new reality and be disciplined about catching those negative beliefs and negative thoughts and going, hang on a second, have fun with that. I mean, you, it, it, it is actually better because the thing is, let me say this PS on this before I finish. If you notice negative thoughts going through your mind and you start judging them and going, oh, damn, I shouldn't have done that. All you're doing is reinforcing them. Let that one sink in for a second. The only way to shift negative thinking is to flip it to positive. Not to say positive thinking overrides it, but things if you keep saying, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that about something you thought negatively, all you're doing is adding more fuel to the negativity. Make sense? So your focus is to be where you want to go in the future and have positive direction. So yes, I know I've said, I did say positive thinking, which is such a anachronism nowadays, but there's a reality that it works when you start doing the deeper work with it. So this hopefully gave you some thoughts, some inspiration, some hints of what you can do differently. And if you have questions about that, let me know. Again, my self-love meditation will be in the comments because there's a 30 day practice, 30 day practice that will change your life. And I'm on it about, I'm, I'm passionate about that. <laughs> if you have questions, again, send me a message, message over social media, or you can put comment, comments below in the comments when I, you can put comments in the comments. You can write in the comments when I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. If you haven't seen my daily Facebook Live, I do this every day at, um, every day, seven days a week, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time is my go is my general time. Occasionally it moves if I'm doing some other events. Um, and I'm, kind of, I'm on the countdown now to my thousandth broadcast in about two weeks, or less than two weeks now. So I hope this has made some sense to you. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch me every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page. If you want to catch the replays or watch the replays, you can go two places to get them. My business page on Facebook, which is Barry Author. You can like my page, please. There's a video um, album on that you can scan through and find the videos there, although only about two or 300 show up there. For some reason, it doesn't show all of them because Facebook doesn't do that, but they are there. However, if you want to get more, plants attacking me. Um, <laughs> if you want to get more of the replays um, or want to see through all the replays, you can go to my business, sorry, you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my channel and on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And on that playlist or in that playlist, uh, every single broadcast I've done, they're all visible. You can search through the titles and find words that speak to you and titles that speak to you and watch them at your leisure. You could binge watch if you wanted to, but that's a lot of talks now, it's almost a thousand. And 15 minutes each, that's a few days of work. So um, that's your choice. Again, your questions, reach out to me. If you want to get some help, definitely book a session with me and uh, get a little self-love meditation. It'll help you get clear about what you want. And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching as always. I appreciate you being with me. And I will see you again tomorrow, same time same channel and uh, as always please take care of yourself i'll see you again soon